YouTube and children of Tom's River North, room EO3, here is a new video. And as you can see, I have created an $18 backdrop. That way you guys can't see how messy my room is. So I'm going to go with that. I just spent about a half hour trying to figure out why my sound wasn't working and my playback, uh, like the player I use, was muted. So I'm not really very thrilled right now to be doing this because it's almost 9 o'clock, but we need this video for tomorrow, so we're going to do it, okay? So the first thing um, I want to mention is that I'm using AutoCAD Architecture 2020, and for anybody else out there watching this, our students are basically just learning the basics of this software. Uh, we already know AutoCAD, we know 3D AutoCAD, we know a lot of different things. And we're just getting into the architecture part of that software now. Um, if you don't know what that software is, it's basically just an add-on to regular AutoCAD. So there are architecture-specific tools like walls and doors and windows, but you still have the same functionality of regular AutoCAD. So I wanted to mention that I'm using 2020 because in class we're using 2017, and the file system is not exactly the same. So sometimes you do get some errors when you're trying to bring in old files. So I'll show you that right now. If I go to Open Files on here and... I bring up my one that I want to show you guys. You'll see that I get a little error here. Uh, this is actually just saying that it's a student version. So if you download it at home, you'll get that message too. But you'll get this and it says it was last saved on an earlier version of the software. So what that basically means is I think it says it's going to update it. but and, and so I can open 17 and 20. But if I try to go back from 20 and 19 and 18 back to 17 or anything earlier, you might have issues where like, windows are not there, walls are moved, things like that that I've had in the past. So you really don't want to do that. If you're going to go back and forth with files between um, class and home, then you probably want to download 2017. All right. And also for anybody else out there, um, if you're a teacher or if you're a student or if you're in college or you know in grad school, you can have this software for free for up to three years past your last year of school. So if you're like 21 and graduating, you can have it 22, 23, 24, and then they'll take it away and try to get the million dollars from you. Um, so here we go. Okay, so this video is basically just AutoCAD versus AutoCAD architecture and also important to note that I have to keep my videos under 15 minutes otherwise YouTube gives me issues and I don't like to do the A, B, and C parts. So we're going to try to do this quick. Um, today in class we learned very basic stuff. We drew a couple walls, we put some windows, we put some doors, and then we learned how to put a roof on top of it. What I want to quickly do is just show you the difference between if I were to draw this plan um, in AutoCAD, I would you know, be drawing it with lines, I'd be drawing it using trims and, and offsets and all kinds of different things, and then I would be dimensioning you know, pretty much the same way. Uh, but you'll notice that in order to get this to look and stand out with different colors and things like that, I would have to physically change the colors of each thing. So everything is going to look very white and plain until you start doing that, which I wouldn't suggest doing because it's just, not, it, it, it's just too much work. Um, you guys also realize that like today, like just drawing something simple like this, every single one of these is a different line. In order to make this 3D, we would have to actually join everything together, and then we would have to extrude it. We would have to hollow out the center by making another box. It's a lot of work. So what we did was we used the wall tool instead, and basically the wall tool, the way that works is you get a little, you should get a little, hang on. So if you don't see it, you can go down to tools here, and you can go to uh, properties. And that'll, oh, it's on the wrong screen, that's why. Hang on. All right, so you get a little menu like this. And in this menu, of course, I would get a phone call. Not a good time. If I'm on the wall tool, I can change the different things about these walls. So if I want my base height of my wall to be like an eight foot ceiling, I would do eight feet. Uh, the width of my wall, standard wall size prior to 2000 and something was like 3.5 inches. Okay, it's really a two by four. Um, but you know, the wood is, is a little smaller than that. It, it kind of shrinks down after they cut it. So 3.5 would be one of the sizes that you could use. Or if you're trying to go with something newer, a lot of times the exterior walls of a house in order to be hurricane proof are a little bit thicker. They might be five and a half inches, um, which is a two by six. Some people also spend the extra money and, or depends on the codes of the county or the state. And they do the two by sixes throughout the entire house. It's a little bit more expensive, but the house is very solid and you know, you don't have any issues. Uh, with any storms or anything like that. Um, something else important that we didn't say in class today was that there is a thing called justification. And right now it's set on baseline. There's left, center, right, and baseline. When we were drawing our walls, and I have this set up now to be a, uh, you know what, let's make this a three and a half inch wall, which is basically what this is over here. As I'm drawing this, you'll see that my cursor is actually on the middle of the wall. And the problem with that is if I do 10 feet, you need to type apostrophe, by the way, if you are going to uh, use feet and inches. 
And then if I go over this way, you'll notice that, let's say I do, let, let me finish this box. I'll do 10 feet by 20 feet, and then I'll do 10 feet and then 20 feet again. So just close, right? But the problem is that since it's snapping and counting that distance off the center of the wall, if I go to dimension that now, you'll notice that it actually comes out bigger than that. It'll come out 20 feet, three and a half inches. Since I was in the middle and it went to the middle, that's where 20 feet is, but the outside of the wall is a little bit further. So that is not the justification that we want to use. And you do have to pay attention to this tool as you're going forward. If I change to left side, you'll notice that as I'm going down now, I'm staying on the outs uh, actually on the inside if I was going to go this way, which would also not be good because you would end up with 20 feet plus the thickness of the wall on both sides. So you'd have 20 feet, seven inches, which is no good. So we really want to be on justification right if we're drawing this way counterclockwise. If we're going to be drawing clockwise, then you're going to be on left. Okay, so I'm going to go to right because that's just the way that I like to draw, but it really doesn't matter. So you'll see now I'm on the outside of the wall. Um, 10 feet by, you know, whatever you're going to make it. 20 feet and 10 feet and close. And then just to show you again, because this is important, this is now exactly 20 feet. Now the inside of your room is not going to be 20 feet, and that's just the way that it is, 19 feet 5. So if you wanted a room that was 20 feet wide, you'd have to move those walls out a little bit further. But we always deal with the exterior numbers. They, they kind of trump the interior numbers when it comes to design, okay? Um, so a couple other tools we went over today. We talked about the door. We have some settings in here. First of all, what kind of door? I'm just going to stick with a standard door here, but you guys can cycle through that and see some other things. You can see bifold doors like would be a closet door, um, like a gla glass sliding door, like you know going off to your back deck or something like that. Um, all kinds of different things that are in there that you can check out. As far as the size goes, standard size for your home is going to be six foot eight, so we'll change the height to that. And then, like I was saying, your front door that you would unlock and, and push into your house, that's going to be probably a three foot door, but there are some doors inside that are a little bit smaller, two feet six or two feet four or even two feet eight could be a pretty good bedroom door. Um, a lot of times when you're designing, you have to kind of figure out like what's going to work and what's not based on the size of the room. And like, let's say you had a staircase and then you only have about three feet of wall. And then, you know, the next room is the next is right next to it. You might have to go with a smaller door. Uh, if you're in the bathroom, a lot of times these doors are going to be smaller. They might be like 18 inches. So in this little box here, you can type the inches or you can type, you know, feet or whatever you want to do. It'll all work. Okay. So right now I'm on a, I'm going to go on a 36 inch or three foot door. It's going to ask me, select your wall. I'll put it in the front here. And then it's going to say, where do you want this? And you'll notice that it does want to snap to the end. So even if I'm over here, if you hit F4, it will turn those snaps off. Actually, sorry, that's 3D snap. F3 would turn off regular O snap. And then you can put that wherever you want. Now, I don't really like to put things randomly. So I actually am going to let it kind of snap to the end. So I'm going to back up before I turn that off. And I'll let it uh, go over here. Okay. That's not the wall I wanted on. Here, let's put it in the middle over here midpoint which also brings up a pretty good point there you're going to want to go to o snap and you're going to want to turn on your midpoint that's just because we never use this use a software before um so it's not in the dead center of this wall but i like to know what the size is here so let's just do a quick dimension and see what that ended up being we have six feet ten so honestly i don't really like that so you could also do this you could draw a line down the middle i can't see the top part of my screen i gotta like I got wires everywhere and I got my camera in front of me. It's it's not really a great setup right now, but it's a little rushed. Um, so anyways, let's go back to the door. Three foot door, six, eight. Okay, what wall do you want it on? And then you'll notice that it's actually snapped to the side here. So if I'm gonna click here, then it's still not gonna be in the center. But if I, and actually, you know, I didn't even notice this. I think it's only in 2020, but it's given me these two sizes on the left and right. So I really don't like that either. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it down right here and then I'm just going to select the door. And I was telling my students today in class that these are dynamic objects, which means that you can move them and they plug up the wall by, the, by themselves. But I'm just going to move this by clicking on the ground and just going um, one foot six, which is going to be half of your three feet over. And that puts it in the center. It's not the best way of doing it. But again, I'm, I'm trying to rush right now because I really want to get this video done. Um, so anyways, next thing is going to be your windows. Okay, windows can be whatever size you'd like. I like to do nice and long skinny windows. I think they look nicer on the outside of a house. But again, this is probably just the size of a shed or something like that. And that's, it's really not even, it doesn't matter what we're making. It's just more showing you the tools and stuff. Um, so what wall do you want it on? I'll put one over here. Again, if I put it in the middle, you'll see what that does. Oh, you know what it is? It, over here, you have um, a justification as well. 
Now, see, that's already on center, so I'm actually not really sure. So I'll have to get back to you guys on that one. Um, I could keep putting more windows in here. For now, we'll, I guess we'll just put them randomly in the room, which is fine. But the best part about this is that when you go into your 3D view, like we did in class today, you already have stuff that's building on its own. So as far as the door goes, we could make that swing out or in, depending on what kind of room it is. If it's if you're going into a bedroom or into a bathroom, it's going to swing in. Uh, we could change the direction that it's swinging. It swings into the right. It swings into the left. Your windows are basically just going to cut a little spot, you know, in the wall. But remember, like I said, they're dynamic. So if I go to move this, I don't want to have that door selected. If I go to move this over, it just plugs in the wall and then it moves the window over there, which is nice. Um, when you're on realistic later on and we're adding materials and stuff, this is actually already a glass material. So, you know, that works out. You can see right through it. Um, and then I just want to recap with going over top of the, you know, with the roof again. So I like to go back to the top here. Don't forget that uh, you have roof slab, but we really want roof. And then we're just going to pick our four corners and hit enter. Now there are some settings with roof as well, so we probably would have already done that. Looking in here, it's going to ask you what is the overhang around the outside. That means that I overhung the house by about, or the garage or whatever shed, by about one foot, which is pretty standard. Um, the plate height, that's going to ask you how tall or how high the actual roof starts at. Okay, So you'll notice right now it's at a 10 foot plate height, which is incorrect because I did 8 foot walls. So you'll see when I orbit that it's actually floating right now, which is not good. So if I select this again and I go back to my properties, you can also right click and go to properties if your properties disappear. Um, I can change this down to eight feet and that's going to drop it down to where it's supposed to be. Okay, you could also move it down two feet, but the, I don't think I would do that because it's not going to change it in the settings. Uh, as far as the slope goes, right now it's on a 12-12 slope, which means that for every foot that it runs, it rises also one foot and that's going to give you 45 degrees. Okay. Um, a standard, I guess a standard rise, you know, your run is always going to be over 12 inches or one foot, but a standard rise is probably about, you know, six to eight. Um, so you'll see that what that's doing is it's just changing the actual pitch of the roof. Let's go to conceptual for a second. Also, I'm using a new software for editing this and I don't know if I like it because I can't see how long into the video we are. Oh, we're already 12 minutes. Well, that's not good. Um, but you'll see it's changing the different pitch on there. So you guys understand that. Okay. So back to... 2D wireframe and back to the top, I want to show you something else that I was looking at before. This is a sample drawing of uh, what we call a cottage. It's just a very small house. It only has a couple rooms to it. And this is a file that I was using. This is an actual house that's somewhere in LBI. <clears throat> but you'll see like we do different symbols for different things. So we have our windows, we have our doors, we're, we're showing the mapping of the room. Um, and you know, we label the rooms, we say like, you know, what the, you know, in this case, we were actually doing some work to a house that was already existing. So we put like existing ceiling height, which just means that if it's an eight foot ceiling, we're not changing it, we're leaving it alone. And then we basically say what the size of the room is as well. Or, or sometimes down here, I'll write like what kind of flooring is in there. Like I'll put hardwood floor or something like that. Um, as far as the dimensions go, they just, they have to make sense. They got to show you something in order for someone else to create it. So it's not enough for you to just understand this design. Um, you would have to actually do enough dimensions so that someone else that's never seen it before can look at it and say, oh, okay, I can build that house because that's how design and architecture and, you know, contractors and things like that work. They just take your set of plans. Really, we print out 10, 10 copies of plans. One of them goes to the uh, contractor, one goes to the town, a couple go to the homeowner, and everyone's looking at the same exact set of plans, which is kind of cool because if you ever drive by um, a construction site or something, you'll see like, you know, if, if you were the one who designed it or whatever, you'll see your plans on the hood of somebody's car and they're always, you know, looking at it and trying to figure things out, um, which is pretty cool. So these are those bifold doors I was talking about. This is just a regular closet, something else that we can do. I mean, you can do properties on everything. So if I right click and go to properties again, you'll see that right now my opening percentage is 25. But if I made that like 50, it would be half open. Okay. It's just changing the angle. If I did 100 here, it would be fully open, which is kind of hard to tell what it is. So you don't really do that. A lot of times we'll do 45. Okay. Uh, what else? Um, stairs. These are just icons. So a lot of this stuff is not 3D because this is just a, for, a floor plan. And we could print this out and it's a floor plan of a house. And you'll see some things have the wrong sizes and the wrong different, you know, look. And that's and that's fine because we weren't making a 3D model. It's not really that normal for us to always make 3D models. We usually just do the plans. Um, so what I really want you guys to do is I want you to take a look at this file and just kind of compare these two here, um, you know, and, and see how much more difficult it would be if we have to draw it this way. But also I want you to take a look at some of the components in here because we're going to end up starting to copy and paste some of these things into our own work. 
And um, from that point, we're going to just try to design and try to build our own stuff. So by the end of the year, I hope that you know you guys can create your dream home. Uh, it, could, it could be a mansion. It could be whatever you want. You just have to learn the basics of it first in order to understand like how to design and how to create things. Um, I guess I already went over 15 minutes, so I'm just going to say a couple more things here. I don't know what's going to happen. It's probably going to split into two videos. But um, now, you know what? Let's leave it at that. I don't want to go too far in this video. Nothing specific. It's just that I want you to look at uh, a house plans. And I, I'm going to actually load these up um, on our R drive. So I'll show you that real quick, how to get there. Um, keep saving on the U drive. But when you are when you go to fly, File Explorer in the classroom, if you go to, um, I think it's this PC, you'll see these here, okay? And then one of them is going to say R drive. So you'll double click on the R drive. You'll see a folder on there that says McGovern. And then you'll see this file in there. And I want you to actually open up this file and draw this stuff. And what you're going to do is your, your, your assignment is to draw exactly this one at these sizes. Um, so it's going to be 10 feet by 12 feet. You're going to put a, let's just throw a quick dimension on there. You're going to put a three foot door on the front there. And it's going to be centered. So if that, you know, is, uh, what do we got? 12 feet. So we've got um, four feet, four feet, and three feet here in the middle, okay? So <coughs> it's actually only 11. <coughs> four feet six, sorry. I'll just throw that on there because I'm, I'm just stupid right now. Four feet six. So you got four, six, three, and four feet six. So you can put it anywhere you want and then move it over. It's totally up to you. Um, but I do want you to put a roof on it when you're done. And then when that is done, you're, you're going to compare this stuff. And I would even like you to maybe just take a take this here and just copy everything over. So if you do Control C, Control V, you could put it over next to it and and just start moving stuff around. Maybe maybe like you know I don't know. You could take these dimensions off. I don't care about that. It's your it's going to be your file, and I have my original, so it's not going to change anything. But if you take off some of these dimensions, you could use a tool like Stretch or something. So if I go right here in the middle of this, and I go straight down and I do S, um, that'll let me stretch those things out. Should let me stretch those things out. Let's try that again. Okay, so I can make that room bigger. Um, I can move doors, you know, if you want to, if you want to change the layout a little bit and get rid of this window or something. Whatever you want to do, I just want you guys to mess around a little bit and understand how working with the software actually is. And for anyone else that's coming from AutoCAD to AutoCAD architecture like we are, you still have the basic functionality. You still have the lines and the polylines and circles. You still have 3D tools. You have everything that you can possibly do in AutoCAD, and you can still type those things at the bottom like you're used to typing except you also have new tools as well, okay? Um, oh, last thing, the different colors. I didn't change the colors of these. It's just that it's we have a layer system. So with a layer system, what that is, is basically, this. Is, there's a lot of layers in here because there's other files that I've been working on too. Um, but you'll see like my walls, I set those in my layers to be a blue cyan color. So anytime I draw a wall, it stays cyan. If everything was white or black or whatever, or everything was blue, it would be so hard to understand everything that's going on because there are some files, I'll open another sample one right now, that just have so much going on in them, um, you just wouldn't understand it. So even even like somebody that does this every day, it's just it's too much. So let's see, let's go for, I know you guys can't see this, but I wanna bring up a file that I've done before. That's a little bit more advanced. Angerman, no. Okay, here we go. Uh, yep. Again, yep, that's fine. Oh yeah, this one's crazy. So this is what happens when like, when somebody says they want something and then they change their mind and then they change their mind again and then they're like, no wait, we want the original one again. And you'll see like, this is this is an actual house that's in LBI again and we were doing, um, we were basically just gutting the entire house and redoing the entire floor plan. But they just kept changing their minds and that's why we have so many different versions. But um, this is actually important to see. These are called elevations. So this is what the house is gonna look like from that side. So this is actually from the, uh, technically the left side of the house because the front of the house is really like a thin part that faces the street. So the house is very deep. Um, this is the this is on the ocean. This is the ocean side right here. So they got all kinds of windows and doors. You can see like we put dotted red lines for something that we're going to remove. And then we put the real stuff in the real color. Um, that's the front side of their house. That's a garage door. You'll see what things are like existing. And then if it has a label on it, like, I guess those are all existing, but we did a lot of room over here. Um, you know, you see the, the name of the actual window that's going to go there and you could search that window and, you know, it comes up as a real size. So like if you went to Google and you typed in, again, I think we left these alone, but if you go into Google and you type in any one of these windows names, 
CXW16. You'll see what kind of window that is. It's made by a specific company. Um, they got a spiral staircase going up to a roof deck. And then that's the elevation. So you see it from the different sides. These are called floor plans. In this house, we have the basement, you know, like the, the ground level area where they park their cars. And then they also have like a little basement space. We have the first floor, we have the second floor, and then we have what we call a roof plan. So we'll have right down here, this is their little garage where they pull their car in. We put an elevator down there. I think this house is actually done now, but this was the beginning stages before anything happened. Um, this is the next floor up, so you can see stairs go up to a deck in the back, and then, you know, that's the first floor, technically. Um, this is the second floor, and then you could see that spiral going up. But again, the point of bringing this entire thing up was just to show you all of this stuff that's going on. There's electric lines. There are lines of things that we're taking out. There's the actual floor joists and rafters and things that are showing the actual structure of the house. We have to label everything because this needs to make sense to a lot of different people. So they need to be able to see this stuff. So now I can turn specific things off in order to make it more clear and especially when we print. But having the colors is a lifesaver because it's just easier to understand this way. This is the roof deck. This is that, by the way, this is an A-frame roof like we were talking about in class also an A-frame roof, no dormers on this house. Um, this is a pitched fiberglass roof, which just means that it pitches down a little bit. Um, that way water can run off of it, okay? So I think I'm gonna leave this at this point and maybe I'll load up this file too and you can see some of these other samples. These are older houses that we've done a long time ago, um, but I'll leave them in the files just so we can kind of understand uh, what's, you know, not understand, but actually steal things from those things. So rather than me creating a three foot door, since I do that 25 times a day, I'll go into another drawing and this means two foot eight door, six foot eight, you know, tall, but I could find a three foot door. I know like one of these entrance doors is probably a three footer um, like that right there. See, it says FWH 30 and this is actually a 611 door, so I wouldn't want that one, but it's got the 12 inch side lights, which are on the sides. So really we can just take these things. We can copy and paste them over into other drawings and it actually is a lot easier for us to draw that way. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll load this one up as well so that way you guys can see it. I just got to be careful with like the confidential stuff because this is someone's home and these are also someone's homes. Um, I actually specifically designed, no, it's not on here. I changed it in one of my other files. These are different houses. I didn't do these, but this one I did. Um, and this is what the house looked like before that. So you can go up there as well. Now the outside of the house didn't change very much, but the floor plan, everything's different. Okay. So you guys can take a look at that stuff. All right. So that's pretty much it. That's 22 minutes. That means that you guys have the rest of the time to yourself. Your only assignment was to just recreate that thing that I was saying at the top and then to explore some of these files. Tomorrow, which is going to be, let's see, tomorrow, really tomorrow is Thursday, but you guys are in class now, so that's Thursday. On Friday, um, we're going to be doing a totally new project. I'm going to give you another file that we're going to do, and I hope that there's another video, but I'm not really sure if I'll be able to shoot it or not. Um, but you're just recreating this. You're putting a roof on it. And then you're going to explore the different things in here. Maybe you can copy and paste some things, move some rooms around. You know, you could just totally delete walls and, and you know, change the shape of the house. Anything you want. I really don't care. All right. So that's pretty much it. Thank you. And for anybody else, uh, I'm at like 500 subscribers right now. And apparently I did not know this, but I could get paid if I had a lot more. So <laughs> if you guys can subscribe to my stuff, that would be nice because I spend so much time doing this stuff. And as you can see, I spent $18 on my backdrop now, which is really just a piece of wood and it's kind of funny and my dog's on the other side of it. But rather than seeing my messy room, now you can see fake wood. All right, nice job. Go out there and get them. I appreciate it. See you guys.